Hey guys and welcome to the third part of this game development course. In this one we're going to be covering how to create a score display. We're going to add a cooldown to the forest gun. We're going to add losing to the game and we're just going to do a couple more fixes. So let's just get to it. Okay guys, so we're in the editor now and the first thing that I want to go and do is go to the main camera and I'm going to change the skybox to just be a solid color and I'm going to be using the hex code 68 times 3, so 368s and then uh, 0, 05 at the end just to get that gray look. And now I'm going to create a new text game object. I'm going to set the anchor to be top left. I'm going to set the position 10, uh, X to 10, excuse me. I'm going to set the position Y to negative 10. And uh, actually I need to change the pivot of it first. And we have to make sure that this is pivot up here. So we can drag the pivot over here. And now we can change it to 10 and negative 10. And now the scene is set up properly. And another thing that we're going to do is go to resources and we're going to create a prefabs folder because we're going to be changing our ball to be a prefab. So we're going to call this ball and here we're going to right click and we're going to create a new prefab. I'm going to call this ball. And we'll just drag this ball over here and that's all we're going to do for, uh, for the scene for now except actually we have to delete this ball first and now we're done. So now let's just head into Visual Studio and we're going to change the game controller script. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio and the first thing we're going to do is just go ahead and write in all the extra variables that we need in the game controller script. So we're going to write public static int ball hit points equals 10. And we're going to write public static int score multiplier equals 1. And then we're going to write private static game object game controller game object ball right, public game object ball prefab so that we know which uh, prefab to instantiate as the ball All right, public static pool game ended equals false so that we know when the game is ended or not uh, and then here we're going to write the start function so we're going to write point text equals game object dot find canvas dot transform dot get child zero yeah get component text not text in mode just text <laughs> and then uh, we have to make sure for that code that the um that the Text, uh, that the point text game object is the first child of the canvas. Otherwise, that code will not work properly. So we're going to write ball equals instantiate game object ball prefab. And now we're going to go ahead and go down and we're going to change this change points function. So we're going to write point text dot text equals score with all caps score plus and make sure there's a space there at the end plus game controller dot points oops points okay and now we're going to write a function to determine whether a position is outside of the screen or out of bounds so we're going to write uh, public static pool position out of bounds vector to position and here we're gonna write if position dot x is greater than screen dot width or position dot x is less than zero or we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna do it for the y and screen dot height screen dot height here move this we're just gonna use the y and this to height and then we're going to write return true and then otherwise we're just going to return false and we don't need an else there because the uh, it will return so we'll end the whole function okay so now we're going to need a function for getting the balls position so public static vector2 get ball position and we're going to return ball.transform.position. Ok, 
Okay. And we're, uh, we have to write an update function, but we don't have, or we should be able to write it now. So vector2 ball screen position equals camera dot main dot world to screen point get ball position. And then that will change the ball's position to a screen point so we can uh, check it. So we're going to do if position out of bounds and ball screen position. Then just return, or not return, uh, where you want to call end game. So we're going to end the game if the ball has fallen out of the screen because that means that we have lost. Okay, so now we're going to go to the input handler script. And in here, we're going to need to add two new variables at the end here. So the first one is going to be um, private float next fire uh, without parentheses equals zero f. And then down here we're going to write public static pool enable player controls equals true. And that should be it for our variables. So we're going to scroll down here now and we're going to go to the push object function. And in here we're going to call game object or game controller dot change points game controller dot ball hit points and game controller dot score multiplier. And the thing is we need to go back here um, and in the game controller script and we need to add in a score multiplier. So int score multiplier and we're going to write this times the score multiplier. Okay. And that should be it for these two scripts. Okay, so we're back in the editor and while we're here, we may as well go over to the game controller and we're going to drag our ball prefab from prefabs and put it in here on our game controller script as our ball prefab. And the second thing that we're going to do is just go in here and we're going to create a new C-sharp script and we're going to call this fader. And now we're going to head back into Visual Studio. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio again and um, we're going to be writing the fader script. And now this is a edited video, uh, edited uh, version of a script that was originally written by Brackies, and I'll have a link to his video when he originally did it there. Um, but mine is quite a bit different. So we're just going to start and we're going to write our required variables. We're going to do public texture 2D, fade out texture. And we can actually make this private. We don't need to access it anywhere else. And we're going to write private static float fade speed equals 0.75f. And you're going to write private static int draw depth equals 0. Private static float alpha equals 0f. And private static int fade as in direction equals negative 1. And in our start function, we're going to write fade out texture equals new texture 2D to, to texture format dot ARGB32. And then we're going to do false. As in, we don't want to mint Babbit. Okay, and now we're going to make an array of colors. Colors equals new color for. And you're going to write for int, oops, int i, I put the second i in the wrong place, didn't I? Put i equals zero. Um, i is less than colors dot length. And i plus plus. Oops. And then down here we're going to be writing colors i equals color dot black. And we're going to write fade out texture dot set pixels colors. So that we set all of our four pixels in our fade out texture to black. And we're going to write apply at the end so that we apply the black texture to 
or the black color to the texture. All right, so now we need to write an on GUI function. And in here we need to write just a few things. So we're gonna write alpha plus equals fade direction times fade speed times time dot delta time. And then here we're gonna write alpha equals math f dot clamp um, alpha. And then we're gonna write GUI dot color equals new color oops gooey dot color dot r gooey dot color dot g and gooey dot color dot b and we're gonna write alpha here we're gonna do gooey dot depth equals draw depth and we're gonna do gooey dot draw texture new rect Zero, zero. <clears throat> so we'll start at zero, zero, and then it will cover the entire screen. So we have to write screen dot width and screen dot height, and then that should be it. Oh, we need to write. Um, actually, after this, we need to write fade out texture, of course. So we actually draw the texture, and that should be it for that part. Oops, I need to write this here. Okay. We're going to remove this update function and replace it with a fade function. I'll put static float fade int direction. And oh, this is supposed to be clamp 01. Anyway. And in here, we're going to write fade direction equals direction and then return fade speed. Okay, that should be it for the fader function. Now we're going to go back into the game controller function and we're going to go up here into the update function. I actually have forgotten to write if the game did not end. Then we want to do all this stuff. And we also in the end game function need to change some stuff here. So game ended equals true and then we need to do input handler dot enable player controls equals false and then we need to do fader dot fade one and then in the input handler function we need to change Uh, can't, I don't think we need to change anything here actually. Oh, the one thing that we do need to change is um, over here, we need to add in a cooldown. So if time dot time is greater than next fire, then we're going to activate the force wave. And after we activate the force wave, we're going to set the cooldown of next fire time dot time plus force gun cooldown okay and then the other thing is we need to check that um, the player controls are actually enabled so we need to write and with two ampers and uh, the enable player controls is true and then we can do all this stuff so now we should be done here and we're just gonna hop back into the editor. Okay, so we're in the editor again and the first thing that we're gonna do is go here and we're gonna add a fader component. And over here, you're gonna wanna change the force gun cooldown to 0.5 because one second is simply too long in my opinion. And now everything should work properly. So if we hit play, you can see the ball is spawning and we can hit it and our score is updating. And if we hit it out of bounds, then we fade out and our controls stop working. Now uh, the other thing is we did forget that uh, this is still called new text off of start so we'll just write score 0 and then that'll look appealing once the game actually starts up so it doesn't just say new text. And that should be just about it for this tutorial. Um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and make sure to hit the like and subscribe button to watch more stuff like this.